These are top secret documents showing how Justin Trudeau and his government are pressuring the Canadian Armed Forces to work closely with China's People's Liberation Army. These documents show that even after China kidnapped two Canadian citizens, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, Trudeau still insisted that our military maintain warm ties with China's military. Trudeau has made protecting the feelings of China's dictator Xi Jinping a priority for our armed forces. Maybe that doesn't surprise you, but these documents also reveal that Trudeau has been sending Canadian troops to China to participate in that country's propaganda displays. And most incredible of all, Canada has been training Chinese military troops at our military colleges in Canada and unbelievably training Chinese soldiers at Canadian Forces Base Petawawa in how to wage cold weather warfare. Trudeau is literally training our enemies in how to kill us. And I'll prove it to you. You're watching The China Files on Rebel News. My name is Ezra Levant, and I'm a Canadian journalist and author. Full disclosure, I'm a skeptic of Justin Trudeau, Canada's Liberal Prime Minister. Last year, I wrote a book about him called The Libranos. This year, I wrote a book about him called China Virus, how Justin Trudeau's pro-communist ideology is putting Canadians in danger. But even I didn't know the half of it. I've never held a top secret document in my hands before. Uh, this one is marked secret in so many places. In some parts it says Canadian eyes only. Other parts are marked five eyes only. That's the name of our intelligence alliance amongst our closest allies. Canada plus the United States, the UK, Australia and New Zealand. I wonder what they're going to think of all this. The China files, as I call them, are 34 pages long. I didn't steal them or hack them, nor were they leaked to me illegally. They were actually just given to me by Global Affairs Canada. That's the official name of the Foreign Affairs Department. You can see the entire document, all the files for yourself, at thechinafiles.com. I'm making the whole thing available to you and to any other reporters who want to report on this. Something tells me Trudeau's CBC state broadcaster is going to skip this one, don't you think? Uh, the documents are not blacked out, as most secret documents are. Normally, you can't read the interesting parts, but not these. They're all just slightly grayed out, so you can still read them. In fact, if you assume that what's grayed out is the stuff they really don't want you to know, it makes the reading even more revealing because you see what they really think is sensitive. Now, there's nothing in here about Canada's uh, military secrets. The, the grayed out parts weren't trying to hide that stuff. They were trying to hide how submissive Trudeau is to China and what he's trying to get our military to do. That's what's marked in gray, but not in black. By the way, I would never put Canadian troops in danger. There actually is one source who was identified in these papers who might be punished by China. So I blacked out that info. The rest, it's just politics that you need to know. So I don't know, maybe it was human error on the government's part to send this to me. Maybe someone on the inside wanted information to get out. A whistleblower, perhaps. Because I only asked one very small question, and they answered it with these 34 pages. Back in April of 2019, I saw this story in a Russian state-run propaganda website called Sputnik. Uh, representatives from over 60 countries arrived in China for International Naval Parade. That's the headline. I'll read a little bit. Representatives from the Navy of 61 countries arrived in the Chinese eastern port city of Qingdao in order to attend the International Parade celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, PLA Navy, Vice Admiral Shen Jinlong said. And here's a tweet from the city of Qingdao showing some of China's naval might and different countries coming to celebrate it. Now, I expected Russia to be there and China's African colonies, but the sentence caught my eye, uh, this one here. High-ranking representatives from Canada, Germany, India, Mexico, Japan, South Korea, and the United States and the United Kingdom are also in attendance at the event. Whoa, Canada was there? 
and the U.S. too under Donald Trump? I didn't believe it. To celebrate China's military power. Uh, actually, no. Here's the real story from Business Insider. The U.S. is passing on sending ships to the Chinese Navy's big 70th anniversary parade in an apparent snub. Basically, America sent their top spy in China. Let me quote. The U.S., however, will only send a defense attache from the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. Okay, so they sent a spy. So what about Canada? Remember, look at the date on this Sputnik story. April 2019. So that was just a few months after China took the two Michaels hostage. Did Justin Trudeau really send a celebration delegation to cheer for communist China's navy right after two kidnapped Canadians were thrown in the Chinese jail? I checked the website of the Canadian embassy in China. They didn't say a thing about attending this parade. No press releases out of Ottawa. So was it true what the Russian propaganda website said about Canada? Was it partly true, like how the U.S. did send someone but it was really a spy? Or was this just Russian propaganda? So we filed an access to information request, as we do hundreds of times a year, asking for any documents that would shed light on the question. Of course, we thought such documents would be redacted for national security secrets, but attending a communist parade is something we had the right to know. Now, we heard back pretty quick. They refused to answer our question before the 2019 Canadian election was over. Uh, that's an illegal delay, but they do that all the time. Well, the election is over, plus a year. And so now, 19 months after we asked the question, we finally heard back from the government. And instead of just telling us about the parade, they told us everything else too. You saw my question. It was about the Navy parade. Well, they sent me the entire calendar of events for the Canadian Embassy in Beijing from April to December of 2019. And it's all grayed out. I think they meant to black out the whole thing. But look, April 22nd to 25, PLA Navy 70th Anniversary Fleet Review, Qingdao. They did indeed go. Canada sent a colonel. That would have answered my question, but look at what else is on the calendar. All the celebrations and parties that the Canadian Embassy was having just months after the kidnapping of the two Michaels in Beijing. You can see the calendar showed that Catherine McKenna jetted into Hangzhou for some global warming festival in June. What a horrific woman flying to China to party while two Canadians were rotting in a Chinese prison. You'll notice that event in particular was under a dark gray highlight. I can understand why they wanted to hide that. It's not a national security issue. It's a national shame issue. The bureaucrats at Foreign Affairs knew it was disgraceful for McKenna to fly to China to go to a party. And look, in October 2019, Canada sent a massive delegation of Canadian Armed Forces personnel to participate in China's military world games in Wuhan. I'm serious. 114 Canadian athletes, 57 Canadian coaches. They're all from the military. I actually had to get those details from the Chinese embassy. You see, the Chinese propaganda mission for nearly 200 Canadian Forces personnel, this whole games was just a propaganda exercise. That was kept secret by the Canadian government. I had to learn about it from the Chinese government. Trudeau sent over a massive delegation to show respect to China's army, to be filmed for China propaganda movies, showing that China so dominates the world that Canadian soldiers came to bend the knee even as China holds Canadians prisoner. So you'd think that's all I would have been sent, the calendar. It answered my question, was the Russian propaganda correct? Did Canada send someone to celebrate China's Navy? And the answer was yes. I think it's telling that Trudeau hid that for 19 months and that we had to find out about it from Russia. I think Trudeau knows he was doing something disgraceful and maybe the person who sent me these documents agrees. So that's all I asked for. But here's what else I got. I got internal memos showing how China is demanding that democracies back down on having any reference to human rights in trade deals. Internal reports about how China is using its so-called Belt and Road Initiative to colonize the world, to build a China-centric economic and political empire. 
how China is changing diplomacy itself, replacing the idea of multilateralism, which is like the Knights of the Round Table where every country equally deals with each other country, like at the United Nations. China is replacing that with something China calls multi-bilateralism, with China in the middle of the world, like a hub with a bunch of spokes going to each other country. So no more international meetings like the G7, for example. China-style meetings have China in the center and all other countries have to go through it to deal with the others. That's interesting. Something else I learned was how badly the Canadian government censors itself about China by looking at the sort of things that they wanted to block us from seeing, the grayed out stuff, because they didn't want Xi Jinping to lose face. Canada is sticking up for the Chinese president. Why are they afraid that Xi Jinping will see that they're calling out his censorship under the great firewall of China? Why did they want to keep that hidden? And why is Trudeau trying to cover up the fact that China is censoring Twitter? The Canadian government mentions an allegation by an NGO that China is using smartphones to track Muslims in Xinjiang province. Why did they cover up the fact that the Canadian embassy has, quote, seen this app in use at police checkpoints in Xinjiang? Why is Trudeau literally covering up, covering up atrocities for China? There's enough in here for at least three other videos, and I will do those in the days ahead and publish them on thechinafiles.com. It's just so much to go through here. This document will take weeks to work through. So for the rest of this video, I want to talk about just one thing, the most shocking revelation in it. These papers show an internal battle within the Canadian government over how to deal with China in the wake of the kidnapping of the two Michaels. On one side of this political battle is China, Trudeau, his pro-China ambassador at the time, John McCallum, and senior bureaucrats, including this man, Ian Sugart, who used to run foreign affairs for Trudeau, and who has since been promoted as Trudeau's top civil servant. His title is the chief of the Privy Council. That's on the China side. And on the other side of this political battle is the Canadian Armed Forces, the Department of National Defense, and our Five Eyes allies, including the US. It's incredible, and folks, the China side seems to be winning. The battle I'm going to show you centered on a memo that the Trudeau-China team was drafting to be signed by Ian Sugar, telling the military uh, to obey them and to keep warm relations with the People's Liberation Army even after the kidnapping of the two Michaels. So all the bureaucrats were trying uh, to tie down and tie up the Canadian military, which was clearly disgusted by China and naturally wanted to stand with our real allies instead. So the battle was over this memo. Memorandum for action, it says. And you see it's marked secret CEO. That means Canadian eyes only. So I'll, I'll go through it. Two, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. At the time, that was Ian Sugard. CC. I-F-M-O-G-M, Th that's an alphabet soup for the political affairs branch and the Asia branch of foreign affairs. Subject, Deputy Minister level guidance from Global Affairs Canada with respect to Department of National Defense, Canadian Armed Forces engagements with China's People's Liberation Army. So I, I read out the acronyms there. So this is the memo put to the Deputy Minister for him to sign. This is directing the Army to play nice with China. Let me read the contents of this memo. As you can see, I'm reading out the full acronyms because otherwise it's just so many alphabets, letters. But it, it's hard to see this because of all the shading, the gray shading. But you can read it all. Uh, you can go to our website, thechinafiles.com, and see the primary document yourself. So I'll read some of it now for you. It's a little hard to see, but you can see it. Summary. And note how this is 90% grayed out. On December 21st, so that would be in 2018, right after the two Michaels were kidnapped, the Department of National Defense requested deputy minister level guidance with respect to Department of National Defense Canadian Armed Forces bilateral engagements with China. Department of Defense Canadian Armed Forces is reviewing its posture and commitments to its engagements with the People's Liberation Army in part 
due to China's response to the U.S. extradition request for Ms. Meng Wanzhou and the resulting Canadian consular cases. Stop right there for a second. Isn't it funny? This memo mentions Miss Meng Wanzhou by name, but won't even say the names of the two Michaels, won't even say they're prisoners, hostages, really. It's disgraceful the way they talk even in private in the government. But get this. Thus far, the chief of the defense staff has unilaterally elected not to proceed with one bilateral military activity training exercise planned for 2019, a winter survival training exercise. China, People's Liberation Army, has not yet been informed of this decision. I'm stunned. I'm serious. Did you know that Canada had a bilateral military training exercise with China? Bilateral means one-on-one. <clears throat> it's just Canada and China there. And apparently we do a number of these. So just Canada and China training together, our NATO allies not invited, the Americans who have subsidized our Canadian national defense for decades throughout the Cold War, throughout the War on Terror, the Americans, our greatest friends and allies, We kick them out and we're hanging out with China's soldiers instead. We're inviting China's soldiers to learn our military secrets. And now the chief of defense staff wants to put one, just one, such exercise on hold. The cold weather warfare session where we train China how to beat us in in Canada. How we train China how to beat India in their mountain battle that's been going on for months. Um, The chief of defense staff thinks that maybe we ought to put that on hold. And here's what the Trudeaucrats write. They say, while resolving the consular cases is the government of Canada's top priority. Again, they they won't say Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor's names. They just won't. Um, While resolving the consular cases is the government of Canada's top priority, ensuring a certain amount of continuity in other parts of the Canada-China relationship remains important. Given the heightened scrutiny, any decision by Canada to reduce or cut ties should be carefully considered to avoid sending any unhelpful or unintended messages. So Trudeau and his staff are lecturing the army. Don't you dare stand up for Canadian values. Don't you dare stand up for two Canadians illegally kidnapped. You keep pretending everything is just fine. That's an order. And that's what the rest of the memo is about the bureaucrats instructing the chief of defense staff that he is not allowed to cut any more joint programs with the People's Liberation Army without Trudeau's permission first. Let me read some more. In the interest of avoiding such a scenario, a letter has been drafted on your behalf for Department of National Defense's Deputy Minister Thomas that will provide guidance consistent with Canada's current approach to China. Look at that. If they really had blacked out the gray parts here, you would have no idea what this is about. You'd know nothing. You wouldn't know that our army trains the Chinese troops. You wouldn't know the army wanted to cancel only one of several joint training sessions, and you wouldn't know that deeply enraged Trudeau and the whole liberal bureaucracy who wanted to handcuff the chief of defense staff and force him to continue working with Chinese army uh, troops uh, unless he was given explicit permission otherwise. So that's the cover letter to the memo, and then they have their arguments. And I know this video is getting long, but frankly, it's all leading to this. Look at this part. Look at the very, very dark part in paragraph two. I'll read it out if you can't quite see it. The review is also driven by concerns expressed by the United States military that at least one element of Canada-China military collaboration planned for 2019 risks unintended and undesired knowledge transfer from Canada to the PLA. That's it. That's, that's everything right there. It's very dark, but you can see it if you look carefully. Look for yourself at thechinafiles.com. Trudeau was making the Canadian Armed Forces give private military training to China on a Canadian Forces base in Ontario. And America said, whoa, you're you're teaching them our secrets. And instead of Canada saying, you're you're right, what what are we thinking? The entire Trudeau government says, yeah, you stupid Americans, we're with China now. That's what this memo means. I mean, just ask our ambassador to China at the time, John McCallum. He's mentioned in these files. Here he is 
when he was asked about Canada-China relations and on what terms. Within 24 hours of arriving in China, I was invited to present my pre credentials to President Xi Jinping, and I conveyed to him a message from our Prime Minister that can be summarized in three words, more, 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 or in Mandarin, geng dua, geng dua, geng dua. You know, McCallum actually said Canada has more in common with China than with the United States. He said that. So, paragraph four repeats that the winter survival training course is canceled, but Trudeau was worried it would hurt China's feelings. Let me read. Department of National Defense agreed that Global Affairs Canada would be consulted before this decision is communicated to China in order to shape messaging in advance and account for ongoing sensitivities in bilateral relations. Paragraph 5 is about the Navy parade in Qingdao, the one I was curious about, and it's threatening the military. They can't make the decision on their own. They have to confer with Trudeau. Paragraph 6 says that any changes between the Canada People's Liberation Army relationship must be approved by Trudeau's China-loving bureaucrats and diplomats first. More, more, more. Yeah, more, more, more is what they want. Uh, the memo basically says the same thing five more times. But look at paragraph 15. Should Canada make significant reductions in its military engagement with China, China will likely read this as a retaliatory move related to the Meng Wanzhou case. No, not Meng Wanzhou, you immoral cads. Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig, say their names. We wouldn't be retaliating against China because, of, because we lawfully arrested a billionaire oligarch the CFO of Huawei, Meng Wanzhou, because she was accused of bank fraud. And she's living the high life in Vancouver, out and about in that lovely city. We wouldn't be retaliating for her. Imagine the person giving moral direction to our military, is worried about her. No, we're not worried about her. We're worried about the two Canadians that were kidnapped by China. I'll keep reading. This is not least because China has used reductions in military engagement with the U.S. in recent years to signal its dissatisfaction with the U.S.-China trade relationship. Oh, so China can pout by, say, canceling port visits that U.S. Navy ships used to dock in Hong Kong. But Trudeau is telling our military we're not allowed to do that to express our displeasure. And just in case you missed it, they drafted a letter marked secret. CEO, which means Canadian eyes only, that said this, Canada does not want to be the partner that is reducing <laughs> normal bilateral interactions. Yeah, we're not, buddy. They're the ones who kidnapped our citizens. We're not the ones degrading the relationship. Um, and more threats that the army had better check with Trudeau diplomats before canceling or reducing anything like the Winter Warfare Training School. And then look at the last two pages in the whole file. <clears throat> the last two pages of the memo, Annex 2, it's called, it's marked unclassified because it's a list of engagements between the Canadian Armed Forces and China's People's Liberation Army. So how could it possibly be classified? We're literally inviting an enemy army to Canada to train with us, and yet they grayed out the first item. So you and I weren't meant to see this, but China knows all about it, of course. PLA members participate in winter survival training at CFB Petawawa, Canadian Forces Base Petawawa. Now, it's small. It's not hundreds of soldiers. It's six to eight personnel per country. But you only need one spy to learn our winter warfare secrets. We actually invite six to eight Chinese spies to take notes and to study and to learn everything. And they don't even have to do so secretly. We actually invited them to teach them on purpose our secrets to fighting in the cold. And that's not all. PLA in Canada, Military Education Commander's Dialogue. So we're teaching one-star and two-star Chinese generals how to properly train their soldiers. Why, why are we doing that? And look at the next page. PLA members attend the Canadian Security Studies Program at CFC Toronto. That's the Canadian Forces College. That's where we train our top men and women. Now we're training China's top men. Uh, and we're inviting them right in there. A uh, couple of senior colonels, it says. 
Um, they can't believe their luck. I mean, whether they're planting listening devices or just making notes of people to corrupt, why are we inviting the enemy into the place where we make our own soldiers? I'll read some more. There's a couple more at the military college in Kingston, too. Do you see that? And I didn't even show you all the sessions that Canadian soldiers are sent to do in China to teach China, to train China, and to be spied on by China in China. Did you know we were doing any of this? Any of this? This memo is outrageous. It's outrageous for what it describes as normal, that we're giving one-on-one training sessions to our enemy's commanders. But even more so that the moment the military says, oh, we should probably cool things off. We should gear down. Well, you've got a full court press by Trudeau to not change a thing. That's the memo they're fighting over. That's a lot of what the rest of these documents show. I'll invite you to read them for yourself at thechinafiles.com. But look at this. The bureaucrats are not now fighting over this proposed memo, right? Which is basically Trudeau telling the army to put China first. So they're, they're battling over the wording of the memo. So a, tr- a Trudeau bureaucrat in charge of China policy named Nicola Payne writes, We are in the process of reviewing the draft and had a couple of questions, comments. And it's all grayed out because it blames America. I'm serious, look at point two. Our impression is that Department of National Defense, Canadian Armed Forces, reluctance to engage with the People's Liberation Army is not solely related to Miss Mung's arrest and the consular cases. That There are other reasons behind their interest in disengaging. From our perspective, it also perhaps to be related to a desire to be fully aligned with five eyes, particularly the United States, whose approach has shifted under the Trump administration. We recall, for example, back in December, Department of National Defense Canadian Armed Forces were keen to cancel the People Liberation Army's participation in the winter survival training following the request from the U.S. Department of Defense to do so. That's what DOD stands for. So they're blaming Trump. They're saying only an idiot would stop training China in how to fight in cold weather. This is a Trump thing, just ignore it. I'm serious, that, that's, that's the meaning of this. So another bureaucrat named Antoine Nouvet writes back saying, I'll get back to you on that whole Trump thing. Whether several Five Eyes countries have expressed concerns about knowledge transfer versus the U.S. only. So they're trying to figure out, do they have to pay attention or not? If it's just the dummies in the Trump administration who are worried about Canada teaching China our cold weather warfare secrets, Trudeau's fine with it. If the Brits or the Kiwis or the Aussies don't like it, maybe Trudeau will yield to them. That's exactly what this means. Now this goes back and forth amongst various bureaucrats. It's pretty clear. If some other country were objecting to Canada training the Chinese army, Canada would pay attention. But if it's just the U.S. that objects, Trudeau doesn't care about them. Look, I've only covered maybe 25% of all these files. I'm going to do more videos on completely different subjects in the days ahead. How Canada covers up China's spying on Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. How China uses the Belt and Road Initiative to undermine rival diplomatic blocs and to neuter human rights concerns. On how Canada's bureaucrats are afraid of offending Xi Jinping. Those are all important, but not as shocking to me as the revelation that Canada has been training Chinese troops, colonels, generals, risking our military secrets. And Trudeau's main concern is that we don't offend China by disengaging and that we don't act if it's just the Americans who are worried. I've read and reread these memos again and again. What I don't see is a single voice fighting for Michael Spavor or Michael Kovrig. Not a single voice promoting Canadian values abroad, not even promoting Canadian interests. I see bureaucrats who see America as the enemy and China as the ally, who think it's fine to participate in Chinese propaganda exercises, whether it's the naval parade or the Wuhan military games. I actually didn't see a single national security secret in this whole mess, but I did see a lot of politics that Trudeau and his team probably want kept quiet. And what I saw is that memo putting our soldiers on a leash. It was drafted for signature by a man named Ian Sugart. 
He was the top bureaucrat at foreign affairs, and it was his job to put the military in its place. He's not there anymore because Trudeau just promoted him to be the top bureaucrat for the entire Liberal government, the chief of the Privy Council. He runs interference for Trudeau on every file now, whether it's on the We Charity fiasco or telling soldiers that they have to train their enemies. How do you feel about what I've shown you today? If you're still interested and want to read more, why not go over to thechinafiles.com, read all the documents for yourself. I found it easier to read the gray parts when I actually printed it out on paper. I've invited other journalists to study this document too. I don't know how many will. Like Trudeau and Ian Sugart, the media party is just fine with China. It's our military that they don't like. And the only thing they dislike more than our military is America's military. Go to thechinafiles.com, see for yourself. And if you appreciate the work we're doing here at Rebel News, please chip in a bit on the crowdfunding button on that page. Unlike Trudeau's CBC, we don't get a dime in government money, which is probably the only reason we're able to tell you the news like this. These secret government documents show that Trudeau has been training Chinese military troops here in Canada over U.S. objections. That's just one of a bunch of shocking revelations you can see for yourself at thechinafiles.com.